G'day legends, Breno's my name and you might have seen my ugly mug floating around the interweb. I'm a lucky bugger, I get to live and breathe camping and four-wheel driving every day and I've made my passion my life. In a previous life, I was the editor of Four Drive Action Magazine and what that meant is I spent the last two decades traveling every single part of Australia, from Cape York up the top, to Tassie, to the Simo, WA, Coffs, all the islands up in southeast Queensland, the works. And I reckon my absolute favorite part of my time at Four Drive Action has been the time that I spent with new four wheel drivers showing them the ropes. Over the years, I've learned a heap of tips and tricks to make four wheel driving and camping easy. And what I wanna do is share those tips and tricks with you guys out there to make your time off road, whether it's behind the wheel or at an amazing campsite, that much better. So today I want to talk about something that just about every four-wheel driver gets wrong at some stage, and that's tyre pressures. Tyre pressures are one of the most important parts of four-wheel driving. It doesn't matter if you're on the beach, if you're out on the hills, in the mud, on the rocks, even if you're touring across the Simpson Desert or on dirt roads, whatever it is, tyre pressures are vitally important. The whole idea behind lowering tyre pressures is about getting the vehicle to sit up on top of the train instead of getting bogged down into it. The more that you can get the tyres to sit up on top, the easier the four-wheel driving is going to be and the less strain you're going to put on your vehicle. So let's first talk about the theory behind tyre pressures. Put simply, lower tyre pressures mean you're going to get bogged less and it all comes down to a little bit of science. When you lower your tyre pressures, you increase the amount of contact patch between the tyre and the terrain. The bigger the tyre footprint, the less pressure per square inch the vehicle is putting on the terrain that it's parked on. When you're lowering your tyre pressures and you're increasing that tyre footprint, that contact patch on the ground, the important thing is not how wide the contact patch gets, but how long it gets. Don't sweat if you're not taking all this in right now because it's not a test. In a moment, I'm gonna show you very clearly exactly what I'm talking about in real world scenarios. So grab a pen and paper because here's the glove box guide to different tyre pressures for different terrains. If you're on the beach, if you're out in the Simpson Desert, wherever you are on the sand, you wanna be at about 16 PSI. If you're out in the hills, if you're hitting the mud holes, climbing gnarly rock climbs, that sort of stuff, around 20 to 22 PSI. You don't wanna be as low as the beach because you might actually risk rolling the tire off the bead and that's just all sorts of drama that you don't wanna be a part of. Uh, if you're doing lots of dirt road touring, whether the dirt roads are corrugated dirt, more rocky sort of shaly sort of dirt, around 28 PSI. Now that won't just give you better traction, but what it'll do is it will prevent premature tire wear and that's just as important. Now those are rough guides and they will vary depending on how heavy the vehicle is, how loaded up you are, how fast you're going, how hot it is, the type of the terrain, but don't sweat, we'll go through all of that in a moment. Now before we get into things, I wanna quickly talk about two bits of gear that I've got here that every four-wheel driver should be carrying to make adjusting tire pressures super easy. The first one is the Adventure King's Quickie Tire Deflator. This lets you let your tires down so quick and so easy, it's not funny. Now, yeah, you could sit there with a stick in the tire valve and let tire pressures down that way, but I'll tell you what, it is super slow, it's tedious, and it isn't accurate, it's just a dead set pain. This little baby right here, it's super fast, it just screws onto your tire valve, it's got a cool little inbuilt gauge so you know exactly what pressures you're dropping your tires to. The other cool thing about it is that it costs bugger all as well. That is a no-brainer, just get one, keep it in your four-wheel drive at all times. Now, the other thing that I got here is the Adventure King's Thumper Max 12 volt air compressor. When you're done four wheel driving at the end of the day, it's vital that you pump your tires back up before you hit the tarmac. Because if you drive on deflated tires on the tarmac, you create an excess of heat within the tire that degrades the tire from the inside out and dramatically reduces the life that you get out of your tires. Now, yeah, you could go to a servo if there's one somewhat close and you could wait in line behind half a dozen other people on a stinking hot day on a hot servo forecourt for a very slow compressor. Now, that doesn't sound like fun to me. Or you could just carry one of these babies in the back of your four-wheel drive, connect it to your car battery, and you've got the ability to pump your tires up wherever you are. Just find a nice shady tree at the end of the day, and you're set. Righto, enough of the boring theory. Let's put it into practice. Let's go for a little bit of a drive, and I'll show you clearly why the right tire pressures for the right terrain are so important. So remember what I was saying a moment ago about lowering tire pressures to increase tire footprint? Well, using a tape measure and a couple of poles, I'm gonna show you exactly what the real world difference is between different tire pressures and footprints are. So I've just got a couple of straight poles here. They're off a um, rooftop tent annex. Just gonna put them at the front and the back of the tire, right at the contact point where the tire meets the ground. Now it's a little bit hard to do this when you're on terrain that's not perfectly flat, but we can still get the desired effect. 
It's all about measuring the tire's footprint. Now, I know I'm on the beach, but just to prove this point, I've aired this tire back up to 36 PSI, so that's sort of road pressures. And then we'll start from here, and I'll show you the difference, the increase in the footprint as we lower the pressures. So the starting pressure uh, is 36 PSI. Starting footprint, let's call it, give or take, pretty much bang on 500 mils. So that's your road pressures. 500 mils worth of contact patch there. So what I'll do, bear with me for a second, I'm just gonna air the tire down to, so we started at 36 PSI, I'll go down to 28 PSI. Okay, so dropping to 28 PSI, not a huge difference, but there's another 20 mil of footprint there. Let's drop it down a bit further. So I've gone down to 16 PSI now. That's the recommended sand pressures. Let's give it a measure. 545 is now the tire pressure difference, uh, tire footprint difference rather. And then that is what makes the difference between sitting up on top of the sand and sinking down into it. The other trick that I wanna to talk to you about is how low you can actually go on the sand. Now, 16 PSI, I know I've been saying that that's a general decent sort of rule, but you can go lower than that without any real dramas. In fact, on a beach like this, this is notoriously soft and sandy, this beach. So I run 12 PSI out here as a general rule, and that just increases the contact patch even more. In an absolute emergency, you can go down even lower. Definitely not recommended to do it for extended periods of time, but if you're finding that you're struggling, days are hot, the hotter it gets, the softer the sand gets, the boggier it gets, um, if, especially if you're towing a trailer or just one of, on one of those really tricky, steep beaches where you just struggle hard. Uh, I'd have no drama running anything as low as like even eight PSI, but be aware if you are running tire pressures that are that low, you're braking, you're steering, uh, you're accelerating, they're all dramatically compromised. I wouldn't be doing any sharp turns because you'll risk rolling the tire off the wheel and then your day's just gonna get so much worse. Um, if you're stuck and you're bogged on the beach, you can definitely try dropping your tire pressures down pretty low, like go down to eight. I've gone down to six PSI before to get out of a bog, but the trick here and it's all sort of a bit of a catch-22, is that you can lower the tire pressures, you can go lower in the tire pressures, but as you do, the whole car's gonna get lower. And so if you're already sitting on your chassis rails, it's only gonna make it worse. So that's where a set of recovery tracks comes in, that's where your mate comes in with a snatch strap or a good old shovel. Anyway, that hopefully clears up a little bit better what tire footprints are about and why we lower tire pressures to increase footprint. Um, I reckon what I want to do now is I want to show you the real world differences in vehicle performance between different pressures. <laughs> Righto, so what I've just done is probably the most counterintuitive thing that anyone has ever done for driving on a beach. Just pumped all four tyres back up to 36 PSI. That hill behind me doesn't look tough, but it's actually super, super soft. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive it three times. Once at 36 PSI road pressures, second time at 26 PSI, and then finally at 16 PSI. So we can clearly see the real world differences between different tire pressures. Um, at 36 PSI though, my prediction is we're not gonna go very far first off, but let's see how we go. And now car's in first gear, low range, and I'm gonna hold about 2000 RPM so we can see the difference in the tire pressures instead of relying on vehicle momentum and straight away she's struggling hard. Oh no, no chance. And this is where I'm gonna stop so I don't get completely bogged. And that is why you don't beach drive on road pressures. So I'm gonna reverse back here without getting completely bogged. I'm just gonna pull up just about here and drop those tire pressures down. So let's give that another go. Now we're down at 26 PSI. First gear, low range. Yeah, that's heaps better. Feel that, oh, not quite, not, ah, uh, not quite, damn. I really thought that we were gonna have that one then, but not quite. Massive improvement, but it was so much easier to take off. Uh, the tires did, definitely didn't bog down into the sand. I reckon if we drop it down to 16 PSI, we'll make this little climb. Well, I reckon third time is gonna be the charm here. 16 PSI, and I reckon we're gonna make it this time. First gear low, and go, go, go. Oh, that's heaps easy, that's taken straight off. Oh, what a massive difference, that is incredible. And that's the real benefit of low tire pressures, especially on the sand. It makes it so much easier on the vehicle, prevents overheating, 
makes it just an absolute dream to drive. <laughs> And there you go. The proof really is in the pudding. Lower tire pressures massively increases your vehicle's off-road ability. So remember, 16 PSI on the sand, 20 to 22 PSI up in the hills, and 28 PSI when you're out touring. And one final piece of advice, air expands as it heats, and that means your tires are naturally gonna increase in pressure as the day progresses. So keep an eye on your tire pressures throughout the day and lower them down again if necessary. For more tips, tricks and techniques to become a four-wheel drive guru, make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget you can stay in touch with Four Wheel Drive Supercenter on our Facebook page, our Instagram, our Twitter and on fourwheeldrivesupercenter.com.au. Righto, here we go. Oh, no, that's neutral. Full start, full start.